Hey Living Springs, it's Thursday, which means another installment of our Thursday's Thoughtful Thought, where we give you something to think about and ponder for the week. And I want to give you something to ponder right now. A couple walks into a marriage counselor's office, and they sit down, and the marriage counselor looks at them and says, so what brought you here today? And then he turns to the wife, and the wife says, well, he takes absolutely everything literally, and it drives me crazy, and I can't take it anymore. So the counselor turns to the husband, and the husband answers, my truck. You'll get it later, and you'll laugh and laugh. You're welcome. Our thought today is on marriage. And in four months, Lori and I will be married for 43 years. And in all those years, neither one of us has become an expert on marriage. Um, and we're still working on things we probably should have mastered decades ago. But after 43 years, we are still in love. And we have learned some very important lessons along the way. Marriage is the union of two imperfect, very different people who bring into their marriage their own good, bad and annoying habits, their own family baggage and dysfunction, um, likes and dislikes, their own desires and expectations. And you take all those things and you mix them together, hoping to make a perfect marriage. What could possibly go wrong? And then sin is definitely going to be an ingredient in that um, mixture because marriage is the union of two imperfect, sinful people. And then add to that you have a global pandemic now where families are stuck inside 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can't get away, um, get out and socialize with other people. And there's the potential for conflict. And once tensions rise, um, there can be hurt feelings and um, offenses taken at things that are not normally taken. Um, and I know this would never happen to your marriage, but possibly a couple somewhere near you this is happening to. Earlier I mentioned that these two people bring all these ingredients into the marriage. But there's two other ingredients that a marriage can't survive without, and that is grace and forgiveness. And that's what our thought today is about. It's grace and forgiveness in your marriage. Agape love, which is that unselfish love, that, that highest form of love, that's probably the most important aspect of a marriage. But a huge part of that unselfish love is grace and forgiveness. Now, grace is a huge part of the way God expresses his love for us. And unfortunately, and far too often, um, it's the one ingredient that is lacking in a lot of marriages. And ironically, uh, we sometimes are, tend to show more grace to our friends and to people sometimes we hardly even know than to person that God has given us to love and honor and cherish. God has given us his grace and we definitely don't deserve it. And by extension, we should be giving generously and extending ample grace to our spouse, the one that he has called us to love unconditionally. And the other one I mentioned is forgiveness. I, I don't know how any marriage can possibly survive without true forgiveness. And the truth is, many marriages don't. Uh, marriage is a lot of work. And as I said, it's, it's two imperfect humans that are trying to make things work. And, and what happens is we end up getting in arguments and get angry. And a lot of times we end up hurting each other's feelings. But a best practice for marriage is when it comes to anger and hurts is to deal with them as soon as possible. In Ephesians 4.26 in the New Living Translation, it says, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. That means don't go to sleep while you're still angry at your spouse. Now, that may mean there, go, there are some nights that you may not get a whole lot of sleep. I remember years ago, there were times that Lori and I were up till 3 o'clock in the morning trying to resolve something because we didn't want to go to bed angry with, with each other. Now, the Bible doesn't say that you, you can't get angry, and it doesn't say that anger is a sin. What that verse says is don't let anger control you. Don't let that anger fester and turn into resentment. I mean, resentment is probably the worst poison that a marriage can have. And it, and it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't destroy overnight. It's kind of like tooth decay. I can go several nights without brushing my teeth, and it's not going to cause any permanent damage. But over years of neglect, what happens is the decay. And the same thing can happen in our marriage. If we let resentment go on and on, unchecked for years and years, it ended up destroying love. 
Now, repentance and forgiveness are complementary principles in the Gospels. And repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry for hurting you. Repentance is having that attitude of, I am truly sorry for what I've done. I want to change. I am sorry for hurting you. Will you forgive me? We want true repentance and forgiveness in our marriages. And both are necessary to grow in any relationship, in our relationship with God, with other people, and definitely with our spouse. So to wrap this up, we're all going to experience stress and tension in our marriages, and we eventually end up hurting each other. But for a relationship to grow and flourish and to survive, we need to extend ample grace and forgiveness in our marriages. So there's your marriage conference in five minutes. Thanks for listening.